Dave, I want to know. I mean, Clay, who knows? He cut Dave, his... Dave, what kind of candy was it? It was gum. He chewed... Oh, gum. What kind of idiot? Who I... breaks his tooth chewing gum? <laughs> Chips it. Only Rob could. That's a wow. that's a Rob move. What's more Rob wow. than Rob? Breaking his chip. <laughs> All right, so I have a little breaking news. Uh-oh. Get the, Where's our thing? There we go. <laughs> I just messed up that open. I didn't have the microphones on, so uh, oh, nobody heard right. that. So, See, you want to do the intros let, again, maybe? Can, can, can we restart? Yeah, let's do the intros. Let's let, just start. Let's, just let, start. No, here's how we do it. Here's how we do it. Rewind. Okay, here we go. We'll restart. Let's try it again. Hi, I'm live from South. I'm not, I screwed up because I'm not live. I, you know, I, I like to. I like you to. I need the music. But I need the music. But I need the music. Should keep, we just do a reset? Live. Can we, we to, reset this yeah, whole let's, thing? Let's reset it. Say, Rob's not here and we're just going down the tubes. How's that Sorry, work? Guys. Yeah. <laughs> wow, man. I thought he didn't add <laughs> so, anything to this show. <laughs> I don't know. Evan's uh, not. It's there. not really him. It's Evan. Oh, don't get. Don't tell Evan that. You know he's watching. Yeah. And Evan's gonna be like, I told you guys, you can't do it without me. Where is Evan? We love you, Evan. Where is Evan? I don't know. Is he with Rob? Maybe they're on a date. Who knows where they're at? He's being grumpy at home. All right, hit me with the music. Let's do this so they can actually see how we start the show. We'll, we'll peel it back. Give me the countdown and everything. Could you, Dave? Um, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> no, wrong <laughs> fucking... <laughs> there we go. What a shit show. <laughs> I just rename it. The Bare Knuckle Shit Show. We are live. You gotta wait for your cue, Dave. There you gotta wait we for go. your cue. We are live with the Bare Knuckle Shit Show. We're glad to be here with you because we are the shit. Line the room with toilet paper. Glad to have you here. It's really the Bare Knuckle Show. We're happy to be here with you. So much to unpack today to talk about. We got Dave Feldman here, and I made some kind of dumb joke that you were dancing to the music before. That's why people saw you doing the Dave shimmy, because you like the theme song. And we got Dave Cranston. Dave, I'm going to give you the same type of intro. I hope it's okay. You know Dave Cranston if you know him. You probably know him. He's Maybe he's kicked you out of an event. Maybe if you're a, a podcaster... Again? No, no, no. Oh. I mean, oh. the sound effect. Maybe there's a... <laughs> maybe, <laughs> you're screwing me up here. Maybe you're a podcaster and he's yelled at you for something. Maybe you've been filming an event he's attacked you. This is a guy that takes care of a lot of stuff around here. We appreciate having him on today. We don't know where the hell Rob is. We're trying to figure that out. I think he got beat up by Lorenzo, but then you guys told me that apparently he did what? He chipped his tooth chewing gum. So he definitely got very, beat up very dangerous. Thing that sounds like a lie to me. He gets involved in a lot of dangerous activities. <laughs> he needs more protein in his <laughs> system. His <laughs> tooth with gum. Can you imagine walking up to a bare knuckle fire and be like, oh, "I had to stay home because I oh, chipped my tooth on was gum." Was it vegan gum? What you Could have been. Was it vegan gum? It kind of has is to be. Is he a vegan right? guy? He's a he vegan. Well, he's a vegan. He's a vegan five days a week, and then he eats McDonald's the other two. Speaking is, of McDonald's, did you hear about the delivery to the office what over the weekend? What happened? He he thought he delivered to his house. He was waiting for it. He woke up. It wasn't there. And then he found out that he delivered it to the office. And Junior saw it on the on the cameras that the birds were. Eating. Yeah, I'm gonna roll. Oh, he delivered McDonald's. Yeah, so I'm he, gonna roll so it in a second. You know, DoorDash, you put your address. Oh, in. you have the security so camera. His last, his last DoorDash <laughs> was to the that office. Was, that the was guy his, that always eats clean. That now, was right? his yeah. vegan his vegan burger from from McDonald's. <laughs> Here you go. Look, didn't they have a vegan look, burger? Look, hold on, look. They're gonna throw it up. In, uh, you'll see it in a minute. It's gonna come here on screen. The security camera from Rob ordered the McDonald's to the wrong place. The McDonald's that Rob no longer. Look, look, they're down there. They're down there. Oh my god. God, this is great. There's, Rob, there's Rob's healthy lunch. There you go, Rob. Rob the vegan. <laughs> Jeez. You know, I I think one time you. I'm not you, making fun of vegans, just no, so you know. But, I'm making fun of Rob because he says he's a vegan and then orders McDonald's. Well, you outed him one time. I was sitting there. We ordered lunch after the podcast, yeah. Dave, in, or DC, because that's the easier way to say your name. We can establish the difference here. And you, we're, we're all eating our food, you know, and you come in and Rob comes down eating his salad and then he leaves and you came in with something. They were busting on you. Like, what are you eating that junk for? And it'd be like, Rob's even eating a salad. And you're like, yeah, Rob's eating a salad in front of you upstairs. He's got three cheese steaks. That's right. <laughs> so that's, that's Rob. The best is one guy, Steve, that works with us. He brought uh, cheeseburgers in. Charlie's Charlie's, Burgers. Oh, right. Charlie's is great here. Wow, that's yeah. the best ever. Mm -hmm. So we brought like 10 of them in. He's like, hey, everybody grab a burger. And so I went up to get a burger. I think uh, somebody else went up to get a burger too. And Rob ate them all. Rob ate all of them. Every single all one. Of them. Wasn't it like seven of them, them or something? He ate seven burgers. Wow, man. This is the Rob Bass show today. Wow. See, when, it's like the Shark Tank. When you leave, you don't know what happens, right? That's one of your lines. It's true. <laughs> That's it. All right, so so much to get into today. We got the recap of the huge show, BKFC 29. We got Mike Richmond coming up at 1230. Wow, that's right around the corner. The Marine Mike Richmond is going to be fighting for us. That's coming up, and we're looking forward to that as well. We're going to get into his fight with Isaac Doolittle, some static he's had with Lorenzo Hunt. It's going to be a great interview. Also, we'll talk about BKFC 30 a little bit. That's in Monroe, Louisiana. That's coming up. BKFC 31, Denver, Colorado, which we were just speaking of. There's some Mike Perry news that's exciting we're going to talk about. We have Dave Feldman here. We'll get to the news on the title situations and uh, 
there, there's some stuff going around. Don't talk about it yet, but I've heard rumors, and I'm going to ask you about some stuff revol revolving around Nate Diaz. Uh, so we'll get into that. Also, Tony Loco Soto. I love this guy. He's entertaining as hell. He was going to fornicate with a dog last time when he won, he said. You know, he was just pre-fight. He was excited. He's friendly with dogs. He loves dogs. He didn't do it. It wasn't on the app. You'll never see it. We wouldn't carry it. But he apologized for it and said he was just trying to be funny, and it landed the wrong way. But is now... It is it on his OnlyFans? <laughs> they are a sponsor now. Um, on the app, or excuse me, on the um, social media. On social media. I saw that he posted something, and maybe we'll roll that video later, too. He has a very interesting diet now. He's, got, he's on a great diet, and he talks about that. We'll talk about that. And then, uh, you know, the champ, one of our champs, was out celebrating her birthday, hanging out with one of the biggest mm. stars in boxing, who apparently had some stuff to say about Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, uh, from what I understand. The so best ever. That's going to be cool. We'll, we'll show that. We'll talk about that as well. But first things first, we ought to talk about Great Falls. Man, Great Falls, Montana. Loud. Loud and crazy. Ruckus crowd. They bring it every time. Great event. I felt that way. You're the president. You're the founder. How'd you feel? Yeah, you know what's funny? I mean, I'm sitting there. The crowd was really into it. There were a lot of great fights that night. Um, really just enthusiastic, but I was getting a lot of text messages from a lot of different people saying, man, I think this is the best show that I've ever watched. I've heard that Bare too. Knuckle. And it, it was weird because we do these big shows and I think that some of them are better, but I mean, it just goes to show you that, um, these fighters really come and give it them all. You know, they fight yeah. their heart out and you know, it's the best. I think best combat sport on the planet. Well, I, I think that too. And I know Dave DC, you think that as well. Now, the thing that I see is, it's not just the fighters, the fighters are the guests that makes the whole thing go. You know what I mean? But the crowd, when the crowd is there with the fighters on TV for, I mean, you're a performing professional fighter. When the crowd's going nuts, that might push you a little harder, get you more intense. So you're, you're just that energy in that building was insane. You were there as well. You're walking around the crowd. Like I was, did you feel that? Absolutely. You know, and I think when we were there last time it was electric and it just, as the fights went on, it just got, louder and louder and just, you could just almost goosebump worthy you look at you you didn't even know you did that you're new to this and he just gave me a jump off there he gave me a transition statement because we were live it was electric you know why because we were in the electric city that's what they call great falls montana yeah, they do they sure do i mean you know they can call it something else too probably <laughs> it was a great it was a great city man called a like, fight town no these guys loved it man it, it was a really unbelievable i mean the most enthusiastic crowd i think that that i ever saw there so far i mean great great fights but also i want to you know obviously the production on our events are just getting better and better and better really um equal quality with anything else out got there. a text message about that from one of our media contacts there she was there and she said the production she's never been to one live she goes oh my gosh the production's off the hook it's yeah. insane so it i agree with that i want to talk about performance of the night uh who got that and uh, i want to give that to andy glenn the referee performance of the night did you see in the go go dallas davidson fight Poor Andy Glenn took a shot hard to the sternum. And, and I'm like, I said, Andy, I'm going to go on the podcast and give you performance tonight because I would have been on the ground. I couldn't catch my breath. He continued refing, and, and he took a hard, that was a pretty hard shot he, he took. Did, he did. He, he, took, he took a hard shot, and then he pushed he man, him back. He manhandled he, but, <laughs> but you know what? I mean, look, man, he shouldn't have hit him, right? He didn't try to hit him. No. But he hit him because he said break, and he didn't break, and he hit him. And that's why he was aggravated. And, and then he came to me, and he was like, <laughs> he just kept pointing. He's like. He's point, he says performance bonus, performance bonus. <laughs> <laughs> I had mentioned something to Big Dan the next day. I was like, hey, you need any glenn. There it is. Right the, uh, oh, there it is. It's, well, it's going to come up in a minute. There it is. Let's watch. Andy Glenn taking a shot. Whoa. <laughs> Glenn pushed him. <laughs> Andy, Andy, I think, uh, he's pissed, too. Look at him. I know he is. Andy's such a nice guy. You know that hurt, man. The sternum's horrible. Knock the wind out of you. I think Gogo's a future star, man. Oh, you think? Def yeah, Gogo, yeah, yeah, man. Both I, I, of good. his fights. Look, Dallas seen. Davidson, taking nothing away from him, but I, I knew as soon as I saw that fight announced that Gogo is no, absolutely. going but places. Here's what I, here's what I like. kind of classify future stars as. Or guys that can really fight. It's not just their ability to dish out punches because anyone can really stand in there and just start blowing gut blowing guys out mm -hmm. if they're not getting hit, right? But when you're getting hit, getting dropped, getting back up, and then looking sensational, that's where I say, True. man, this guy really has it, and he definitely has it. Uh, he does. And another thing you look at with Gogo -Go is <clears> – <throat> I, I look at who's coaching them, how they're training. Because when you do these interviews, you learn stuff. And I say it all the time, and, and it's so true. There's so many good coaches and trainers out there. But I, I see that when people work with Ryan Perez, it makes a huge difference. Britain, 
Britton Hart working yeah. with Ryan. Yep. Joey's working with Ryan. That's why I keep saying these people, not only do they work with them, they kind of, I feel like the bond becomes tight. It's like I call them and people are starting to call them this custom auto of bare knuckle. That's what Ryan Perez is for people. Jared Grant, like everybody. KFC cheat code, I think, is what he Yeah, BKFC cheat code. Look well, at that. That's see, a quick little look, plug man, for him. You know, here's what it is is in. You know, in, in basketball, Dave, if you want to get good at basketball, what do you do? You play basketball, right? Yeah, practice. And if you want to if you want to get good at boxing, if you want to get good at fighting, you have to fight. You have to spar. Mm -hmm. You have to actually spar and fight in the gym. Not fight with bare knuckles, obviously, but get hit and hit back yeah. in the gym. A lot of these guys and girls, you know, they do all these things on the pads, um, you know, patty cakes on the pads mm -hmm. and and they're shadow boxing and they're doing all this stuff to get them in condition, but they're not really training to fight because they're not getting hit and then hitting back. And Ryan Perez has those guys sparring all the time. And I think that's why his fighters are looking a little bit oh, it's better. That's a big difference maker. He was kind of telling me that some stuff about when he was sparring with Joey and stuff, not getting too deep, but what, what he's changing and how it's going to work. And I'm, I'm excited to, to see more of that when he gets these people under the slaughterhouse management or slaughterhouse gym, I should say. Sure. And then we go from there, but you're seeing the differences and go, go. I agree hundred percent future star. Uh, you look at, Let's talk lower in the card. Louis Lopez, man. Uh, Louis Lopez and Dylan, they were fighting the night. Now, that was insane. There's a great video. that we, I don't know if you saw it yet. They did it to Rocky with Riggs in the corner, and they have, like, the Rocky theme, and it's his comeback, and it's got Lido, It's got Wheelock in there. Do we have that queued up? Could we take a look at that really Give quick? Give me a second, right. okay. Well, I'll, yeah, let me know when you're ready to do it, but that's fight of the night, as that well it great. should be. Louis got so much heart. I'm a nerd, so I'll tell you this. Louis Lopez came out the Triple H's theme song. I thought that was pretty cool. I, that was, <laughs> I, I mean... You know, I rate it in the top five fights ever in BKFC, BKFC history, awesome. without a doubt. I what mean, a comeback. It's, see, look, like Joey Beltran and Tony Lopez, I rate in the top five. I don't know if you guys did when you did your thing, but I do. But at the end of the day, is it was just a little different, right? Like, these guys were throwing everything they had on every shot. So it wasn't just that they were banging with each other and banging back with not a lot of intent on it. Mm -hmm. These guys were trying to knock each other out with every shot and getting hit. I mean, head-turning shots. That's what we say, like, in Sick. boxing. It's fighting. Boom, head turning shots, not just shots where you get boom and you keep going, but like boom, head turning shots with these guys. I man. will it say that crazy. I get when I do get to watch the fights, my seat's right next to Dave's. Mm -hmm. And I think out of all the fights, that was the most animated he's ever been. I was gonna Every ask now that. and then was like, whoa, oh, no, yeah. Like, what, was, what was a great point because that's where I was going. We're like, first time we ever hosted, we're on the same wavelength. This is scary. Uh, where were you at when you're watching that fight? You might be animated, but in your mind, what were you thinking? Like, holy shit, holy shit. Like, what were you, what was your no? I text, um. Nate, I said, remind me, fight it tonight. <laughs> he knew right away. In the first round, and he's like, it's only the first round. I said, watch this. Check it out. This is the Rocky version of it. That's awesome. Isn't it? See, you know what I love about that? Let me tell you what I really love about that is when you have a trainer and a fighter, it's a there's a big trust thing. Meaning when the trainer tells the fighter something, you have to trust him enough not to think about it, to do Just it do as it. soon as he says it. And Joe Riggs said overhand, bang, threw the overhand right away. You know, I really like to see that where you know, where the fighter really trusts the trainer and the trainer's telling him the right thing. That's good that's good uh color commentary. Thank you, Dave. But that right, it really is. But that right there, like that, that was awesome, right? How they edited. Shout out to our production team. I don't know who put that together. It was Evan. Was that Evan? Give him some clout. Okay, Evan. Good job, man. That was awesome. Great that job. was incredible. Great so he's job. somewhere saying, you're welcome. <laughs> Actually, was it Evan? It might have been James. That's, That's what I don't know. To, okay, yeah, Evan and James, for, uh, you're both awesome because you both do great work. So I'm going to give it to him. Good both. job, James. <laughs> you're fucking Dave. So, all right. That was an incredible fight. Uh, deserved fight of the night. Clearly, knockout of the night, uh, Jordan Christensen. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, look, it was a toss up with Jenny Savage. That's what I was but at the end ask. of the day, is the Jenny Savage girl did get up and and they stopped the fight. I think this guy got up too, but I mean, I just thought the way he went down and banged his head on the canvas, like he was out. And mm -hmm. you know, we had to make a choice, right? We we, we didn't give it's two; we hard. could only give one knockout of the night. Yeah. So you know, 
I definitely thought it was him. So I, I like that you brought up Jenny Savage. I mean, great knockout. No slight on her. She's awesome. Love watching her fight. But you're right. You got to pick one. Sometimes it's really hard. Like we argue about that in the office sometimes. Just one of my one of my favorite people in this organization is Jenny Savage. Just very complimentary. I agree. Always trying to do the right thing. I mean, I remember her one fight. I think she fought Britton Hart, and she got really busted up. And dude, she, her smile was from ear to ear, thanking me. And I'm just like, man, like I just want I want to take care of every one of these guys and girls always. But you know, we can only do so much because we have a company to run. But man, she just looks sensational. Bang. I mean, yeah, this is... She was thrown with intent. See what I mean? Like, they're not just throwing. I mean, she was thrown with knockout intent, and and it happened. Bing. Tennessee gangster. There she is. Boom. Down. And I don't know if it catches here on camera, but I was sitting next to you at this point, and Jenny was so pumped up, I saw her run out to you and said something like, I told you, boss. Exactly. But (laughs) do do you see what... I mean, now this girl, she got dropped, definitely. But she's back up. She more quit than actually got knocked out out you know what i mean the other guy was out banged his head on the canvas like that yeah. boom and i was like that's Whoa. a knockout that was a knockout. Yeah, she she's came like, over and said thank you boss i'll do anything for you i thought she so she gave you like yep. the no, she was pumped dude yeah, she was she's pumped. awesome she's, she's good awesome. people so shout out to jenny savage uh other than that i mean so many other great fights let me check our timing here see where we're, we're going to come up with uh the marine mike richmond around 12 30 just if you're watching so you know you can get ready for that but as you look at some of these other fights i mean Boom, oh, see? Yeah. What do we have up here now? Oh, this is the knockout of the night? Boom, he hit his head on the canvas. Boom. I heard that, and, you know, um, I was like, there's no way. Yeah, this guy couldn't. I mean, he wanted to continue, but he his legs were not under him. Shout out for him to want to continue, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, absolutely. Would, I, I would act like I was sleeping. That's just me. Uh, that's why I could never be a bare-knuckle fighter. Rusty Crowder. Let's talk about Kai Stewart versus Rusty Crowder. So Rusty Crowder, this is the feature fight. Last time, if you don't know, I know you know. I think Evan's still wearing the beer from it. Last time in Great Falls, Montana, Rusty Crowder did not please the crowd. Uh, he won, and he just said to him, he, was, he told him they were number one. And I don't know why they didn't like it, but they didn't seem to. He said it with the middle finger, but they threw beer at him and stuff. I was actually excited because I wasn't at the last show, and I kept saying, I hope that they d- dislike him again because I'm just going to open my mouth and take the free beer when it comes at me. I thought it was a free <laughs> beer thing. But no, Rusty Crowder, a lot of people weren't into him. I had seen him with uh, shout out to the Weekly Bust, their local podcast in uh, Great Falls. And I, I grabbed their mic, and I was in one of their interviews, and I saw Rusty walking by. So I grabbed him, and I said, hey, Rusty, here he is, Great Falls' favorite son. I said, come on over. I said, last time you were here, you told Montana they were, or Great Falls, they were, they were number one. And he goes, no, I didn't. I go, yeah, you did. And he goes, no, they're number two. And he, I said, Rusty, <laughs> you're going to get beat up before the fight. But so he. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, it's look, crazy. It, was a, it was a fight that really could have went either way, I thought. Yeah, me too. I thought that Rusty Crowder came out, um, looked really good. Um, in the first couple of rounds, he got gassed fast. I don't yep. know if he was in great shape. He did come in a few pounds overweight. Mm-hmm. But that's what showed me about Kai Stewart is Kai Stewart's obviously not the most skilled fighter on our roster right now, but he's an athlete. He's a wrestler sure and he has heart, right? He figured out a way to keep moving forward and win that fight. And he won that fight. It's not that Rusty Crowder lost it. He won that fight because he found a, found a way to win it. Um, and, you know, he looked good. He's getting better. Is he ready for a championship fight right now? No, not at all. But is he getting better and better every fight? Absolutely. And his heart, tenacity, and, and, and the will – to develop more skill is something that I really admire about him. Yeah, that was a tight fight, too. I mean, if you look at the real-time scoring at the end of four, I think whoever won the fifth won the fight. Absolutely. Right? Yep. Yeah, yep. so that, that went, you know, up to the last minute there. That was the one thing I was going to say was, is like being from outside the fight game and learning, watching mm-hmm. the technical aspect, it was pretty awesome seeing Kai, you know, he was down 2-0. And then watching the tides change yeah. in the third round and then the fourth round, and it was like, you know. Shit. Conditioning and heart, right? I mean, a lot of people go to oh, me, wow. would you rather have a fighter with skill or with will and will all day okay. long, especially in this sport? In well, this sport, if I got a guy with will, yeah. they're making for exciting, you're, exciting fights. You're knocking down walls, you got Absolutely. a guy with will. Yep. And, and the thing is, if you look at um, Kai, if you know his background, he's a wrestler, college wrestler. You talk about will, you talk about heart, discipline, wrestlers. Discipline. I mean, any any discipline in fighting, but I'm saying it's a certain kind of discipline in wrestling, I think, that makes you have more heart at the end of the day when you go through those kind of systems. But he was very popular there. The crowd was pumped. And in his post-fight, I know you said he's not ready for a title shot yet, but I, I got to respect the kid's business acumen. He just decides to call out that he's number. He wants, uh, what, 145 division. He said he's ready. What did he say? You can send them, but if you don't want them back or something. It was a good little line he came up with. And, uh, I mean, you're saying, what do you think for Kai? I'm not saying, look, that there's no way he can be in the ring it's with these yet. guys. I don't mean that. I mean, no, look, for a championship. I want to see a guy be ready for a championship. Yeah. I think two more fights or so, and he's ready. You know, he's, he's learning every time. He's getting better. And 
that you know he knows what bare knuckle is now, right? A lot of these guys that that come into this sport that you would think are going to be the best in the world, and they get hit with a bare knuckle, it's a whole different world for them. Yeah. But now he knows what bare knuckle is. He's he understands it. it, and this fight especially understands that they weren't a little blowout that he had. This was a war for him. Sure was. And he showed that you you know he showed he belongs here. And I've had other fighters tell me that that have quick decisions and stuff. They want to go that five rounds sometimes because they want to feel what it feels like, so they can then in the future. It brings them into being a better fighter. Yeah, I, I just want to mention one more sure. thing on that. See, what happens is fighter gets one or two wins, uh-huh. and then he starts what we call reading this, reading your own press yeah, clippings. And then good. they, but they just think that they're, they should be further than they are. But there's no rush here. I mean, the kid's what? He's, young. he's, he's still young, in college. Yeah. He's still in college. 20 or 21 years old. Yeah. He's got a, a long road ahead of him. No, no sense in rushing, right? Yeah. Why rush and get it over with? Why not? Just take your time, learn a little more, and then be absolutely prepared for that title shot when it comes. And then you have a good shot shot of winning it. Who do you think you should fight next? Hmm. Where's Nate? Oh, yeah, I'm, um, <laughs> man, I don't even know. Really. DC, Dave Cranston, what do you think? Same weight class? Uh, I mean, think him versus Louis Lopez. Would be... <laughs> He's ignoring my question. No, no Louis Lopez. Would be Actually, fun. that would be a good one. Right? Be a good one. Look at that. that. Be a good Nate one. Shook. Nate Shook sitting with I us. I don't want to do his job. <laughs> that, that would be a good one in Great Falls. Yeah, that'd be. Do you know how loud yeah. that place would get? It was crazy. Oof. Crazy. Louis had a big contingent. So did Kai. So great job, Kai Stewart. Hefty bag. Now I believe calling himself the outcast, Kai Stewart, because nobody wants him around or something. He said, "I love it." Uh, Joe Riggs, Josh D Day Dyer, Joe Diesel Riggs. Uh, you know, Joe looking for redemption in this fight after what happened last time with Lorenzo. Uh, you know, my heart hurts for Joe. Joe is such a nice guy, great fighter, such a legend. And I feel like when he comes to his home area where he's living, he has had too bad luck. Like, this is bad luck, the headbutt. And I heard both of them talking to kind of peel the curtain back a little bit afterwards. And I think that Joe thought that the headbutt was a punch. And Joe said something like, "If that, I thought when I got hit by your headbutt, it was a punch. And I thought, oh, my God, this guy's got power. Yeah, he's, he, he came over to me and said that. And then he said, why didn't you let the fight continue? And look, I don't make those calls, but I was very happy that that fight did not continue because Joe shot. was out, and he got hit with an unintentional headbutt. He was definitely out. He was definitely concussed, and had he been able to continue that fight, he would have definitely got knocked out, and it wouldn't have been good for him. Yeah, I, no, because he, he was on Queer Street, so to speak. He was yeah. on. He was woozy, and and he that was the right call by the but, doc. I mean, you and then and then and, and then he came back over to me and he said, "I just watched a replay. Thank you for making sure that fight, you know, didn't see. Continue. Isn't that great? Because." Joe is probably one of the nicest guys in the whole entire That's organization. Wonderful. What a great guy, man. What a great guy. It's great to be around. So I, I my heart broke a little bit for him that, that it ended in that way. Uh, even for, for Josh D. Day Dyer, here's this great big thing for him, and that's how it has to end. And uh, by the way, this is weird. I feel like I would feel this. Josh was saying to me, and I believe he said to uh, Riggs as well, he didn't even know he had butted him. How hard must your head be to not even know your head butted well, somebody? When I first saw it, I thought it was a shoulder. I thought he rushed in oh, and hit him, that, okay. clipped him with the shoulder. I wasn't sure. And then when I saw Different it, that, angles, that, was yeah. a, that was a nasty, good. nasty head butt. Do you remember that Mountain Dew commercial? I think it was the the guy in the Ram. They're like, yeah. that's what I think when I see it. But it's good that we're keeping the fighters safe, even though it's not the ending we would want to see. But you got to keep the guys safe. Uh, so kudos to both those guys. I know they train really hard. Definitely Sucks to see it them at like it again. It would be yeah. pretty awesome because I was looking forward to that fight. I agree, man. I was too. All right, and then we look at the main event before we get the Marine Mike Richmond on here. Uh, this was an interesting main event because it changed, what, three I days? a fucking feeling. <laughs> How long I've been waiting, actually. And now she's a champ. <laughs> yeah, now she's a champ with a feeling. To actually hit that button, I've been waiting probably a year. <laughs> I love it. In we an actual situation. Perfect timing on an actual situation. Yes, when we talk about Britain. So Britain, uh, her feelings, who knows? She just wanted to fight. She's going, it was historic. The first ever world strawweight title for women. And we got Fanny Palumpi in there, right? That's what we thought. And then it all went to, I don't want to say shit because we fixed it, but. Look, I mean, you're talking something that happened three days before the fight. It's crazy. had to make an adjustment. Teresa, you know, um, actually it was, uh, it was Evan actually who said, what about Teresa? And and I said, yeah, actually. Man, you were giving him a lot of credit today. No, that makes sense. (laughs) So I just wasn't sure if I wanted to do that fight for the championship because, you know, Teresa has not fought in that weight division, or she she has fought once, but I think she had a draw in that weight division. I just didn't know if that should be uh, for the championship. I let it go ahead for the championship. Maybe in hindsight it shouldn't have, but no one in our whole entire roster is more deserving of having a championship belt than Britton Hart. I she agree. fights anyone, anytime, any place, and brings it. And not just brings it; she's evolving as a fighter. Sure she's is. looking so much better each and every time she gets out there. I just wanted. It was happy for me to see, not because I like Britton better than anybody else. I happen to think that Teresa is just a phenomenal person. Oh, yeah, but I, I had 
Britain fight for me as a B-sider in a boxing match fight in a German Olympian back really? in 2017, two days after my father passed away. I had a fight in Wilmington, Delaware, where Roy Jones fought Bobby Gunn in the main event, and Roy Jones ended up stopping Bobby Gunn, but she got beat on that undercard, and for her to, you know, how everything just goes around in a circle, come back and it's actually crazy. win a championship for this new sport and this new promotion that we developed, you know, it's pretty cool. Dude, I didn't know that. Yeah. It's, a, it's a good story, but, like, I was excited for her. Same reason, because she's put... I've watched her. You've watched her. D DC, you've seen her. So much hard work that she pours into this. She's got so much heart. You were talking about heart and will earlier. That's Britain Hart to a T. That's why it's her name. But I, I just... It made me feel good. And if you would have pulled that title shot away from her, that would have broke my heart, because she deserves that. And, well, and I, I get, wasn't really concerned about breaking your heart, Brian. <laughs> I've let a heartbreak. I keep using that heartbreaking today. It's my crutch. I know. You're going to cry? Yeah, I think I'm, like, I'm, getting, I'm getting nervous. What yeah, was, was the Kleenex conversation function? like with Britain when, you know, you obviously Fanny had to pull out and then you brought her another opponent. She just was like, let's go. Oh, she was, she, she couldn't have been any more thankful. Thank you for saving this for me. You know, thank you. Thank it's you. Awesome. Thank you. She was awesome. And then she came up to me after the fight and she said, thank you for pushing for your dream so I could live my dream and wow. be able to capture my Did dream. you see so that video cool. of the little girl, uh, the childhood cancer survivor that was sitting yeah. in the front row with her and Britain? That's on awesome. Instagram. Wasn't that beautiful? Yeah, it was awesome. We were all wearing the ribbon. Yeah, that's why we had the ribbons cancer. if you saw them. But yeah, it was the awesome. moment, I think it's on our Instagram with Britain Hart and that little girl is beautiful after yeah. she won the no, title. That was great. It's it was wonderful. Great. It so was congrats great. to Britain Hart, Sharisa. I was actually fight. looking this morning that she's now one of three fighters in BKFC who's fought nine times. Nine wow. times. Who are the other two? Let's think. You tell me. Um, Palomino's had a bunch, but I don't think it's been nine. No, it's not nine. Um, Reggie Barnett? Correct. Oh, yeah, that's a good call. <sighs> uh, Lorenzo Hunt? No. No, it's not Lorenzo. Um, Joey Beltran? That is correct. Jo wow. Whoa! All right, guys. Yeah. We need like a ding. Wow. Ding, Husband and wife tied man. for the most amount of fights. That is true. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, man. That's a really crazy stat. Well, that's a great stat. Thank you for that, Dave. So we're, we were very excited to see it. Now we have another champion crowned. This is going to make for more interesting fights. I think it's a great weight class for Britain. I think she's going to excel huge in it. And uh, we're going to have Mike Richmond on in just a second. He's in the virtual green room. So we're going to, we pretty much wrapped up the Great Falls card here. Just, I want to say one more thing. Awesome card. If you don't have the app, bkfc.com because you missed it you should still go back and watch it thank you great falls for just your energy that you gave us it was an awesome night uh, to wrap that up put a bow on that but now we got to talk to the man the myth the legend the marine mike richmond he's going to be in denver coming up bkfc 31 taking on isaac doolittle the honey badger mike how you doing man i'm doing good guys i just had to take a little break we're getting <laughs> after her in the back here i figured you were so, in the uh... gym I'm going to slide off into a different room real quick. That's cool. Mm. He's getting ready. He's always working. Nah, I love yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. I love it. So, I'm to, as you're, ahead, yeah, I'm trying to knock heads off. Yeah, I, well, I know. <sighs> as you're walking back through the room, I'll tell you, we have DC, Dave Cranston here, sitting in for Rob today. And we have the founder and president, David Feldman's here as well. So he may be hopping in this interview yeah. a little bit. But Yeah, yeah. How you guys doing? Let me hug yourself. We're this doing great. I can sit down so much, so. That's cool. shaky. That's cool. Yeah, we'll wait till you sit. I'm just looking at your facial hair. I know that you only, uh, you know, every time I see you, I've known you for a while now, Ooh. but every time I see you without the mustache and you got the full beard going, I know the mustache is like your fight thing. It like freaks me out. Oh, by the way, look at that. Smart man. Only fan sponsorship. Look how smart he is to wear that on the interview. Oh, I see what you're doing. That's smart. No, it's smart. I, I, I got the old logo, so uh, I'm slacking there because I got the other t-shirt. So but, uh, I got the other t-shirt already and dirty yesterday. I don't want to bust out this one anyways. I don't want to look at your OnlyFans page. I don't know what you have on there. Can you dish a little bit before we get started? <laughs> <laughs> Is it a typical OnlyFans page, Mike? I really don't know. No, no, no. It's definitely, uh, you know, OnlyFans is not getting away from explicit content 100%, but uh, obviously we're bringing on influencers, influencers, fighters, um, athletes, stuff like that. Well, I um, mean, uh, OnlyFans really trying to open up that that avenue. It's good you said that, you said, but you're also breaking the ladies' hearts that are watching right now, Mike. I'm sorry to say. Uh, I'm so happy to have you on here. And I know I know that you have your big fight coming up. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about some stuff that's going on with Lorenzo a little bit. But when I look at you, I know your history. I know that you grew up wrestling, right, in Minnesota. Uh, and I feel like yeah. in Minnesota, where you grew up, it's either wrestling or hockey kind of thing. Why did you choose combat right. sports over a hockey thing? Did someone steer you that way? How did you end up here? You know what? It's a funny that you asked that. Even people that um, wrestled still played pond hockey uh, in Minnesota. So uh, it's one of those things where you still played hockey, whether it was organized, you played pond hockey, you played at the park. Um, I think it was just 
so my parents got me into it and, uh, and you know i enjoy doing it so i did that at a young age and uh yeah i, I do agree it's one of the it's uh hockey hockey or wrestling in minnesota for sure but our basketball program here is getting better football is getting a little better in the state but yeah wrestling or hockey so yeah definitely so you just kind of your parents kind of got you into it and all that good stuff but i mean as as far as the stuff you've done in combat sports you know we've seen what you've done we've seen your background we've seen you crushing it in bare knuckle too aside from your background but for you uh, bare knuckle is different i always ask this question to men and women that get involved in bare knuckle that come from other disciplines and stuff you're so good at this but why bare knuckle for you did you know it would be your lane Did you hear me? <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Mike Richmond, I don't want him staring at me. I get nervous. That's frozen. Hold on a second, that man. Makes... I'm sorry if it's my Wi Fi or what's right. the deal is. You're here. frozen and you're just staring at me, and I'm very nervous you might fight me right now. I, I don't, I'm starting to sweat, Dave. Can you help me if he jumps through that screen? <laughs> That's a pretty good one. <laughs> I really am. Second, guys. That's all right. We can do audio for a little while if you want. Um, can you hear me? I can hear you. We'll just keep your intense stare that makes me nervous that I can't look at. <laughs> um, so I'm saying bare knuckles different. You know, you've done so much other stuff. Here you come to bare knuckle. You're excelling. You're undefeated. You're going town to town. You're knocking people out in their hometowns. We'll talk about that in a little while. Uh, that's an interesting stat in itself. But why for you? Why bare knuckle? Why are you excelling? Did you know this would be your lane when you got into it immediately? Uh, sorry, I lost you guys for a second. I don't know if it's my wife here in the gym is really bad or what the deal is. For me, I think it's just always... Um, it just catered to my style of fighting. I like being in the pocket. I like going for the kill. Um, in MMA, that was always my style. In MMA, I always wanted to bring the action, mm -hmm. and um, it was just able. It was an easy. It was an easy transition for me. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing that every time you fight. You're a pleasure to watch fight. Oh, you're you're just damn it. crushing people. I can still hear you. It's all right, man. Just keep going. It's cool. So. You told me one time, I remember this in talking to you, that you just know how to flip on a switch to destroy. They were your words, not my words. So when does it flip? How hard is it to flip on and off? I mean, do you compartmentalize since we know the Marine, you've been in the military? or How do you flip that switch? What makes it go? You know what? I I, I can't explain it. Uh, it's just one of those things that's just built into me um, when it's go time. Uh, for me, I don't know. Uh, I, the, the flip switches right when I slide through those ropes. And, and then it's go time. And then once I stare at uh, my opponent in the eyes, um, I'm, I'm going for the kill. So, I mean, maybe it's something that uh, from a young age, maybe it's a, a being in the Marine Corps. I think it's just a combination of a lot of things uh, in my past that just turns me into a killer when it comes to bare knuckle fighting. Um, just like you were saying earlier, uh, before you were cutting in and out, uh, I do truly believe Bare knuckles different. Bare knuckles not MMA. Bare knuckle isn't boxing. There, there's a difference, a uh, different beauty, a different uh, beautiful violence to this sport. Where you know this isn't uh, this isn't a bar fight. This isn't a fighting a dude in the street, right? Uh, you're preparing eight to ten weeks, sometimes a little shorter, um, under the hot lights, the cameras, all the fans cheering, and uh, you got to go in there. And, and crack someone bare knuckle and they're gonna the, the the first punch that you land on their head is a different feeling than you've ever felt um whether you whether you've gotten a fist fight outside of the ring or not it's different uh those those variables and those elements um when you can adjust to that when you can uh keep your demeanor calm uh, and you can stay calm cool and collected uh you'll build a muscle memory to <clears throat> To, to, to treat this as a business as usual. And that's why if you ever watch me, I'm always trying to stay calm. I'm you always do. trying to stay cool. No, I, 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 I don't, I don't overly get excited because that, this is what I'm, this is what I'm supposed to be oh, doing. You're like a Terminator. Yeah, absolutely. Mike. So Mike, you know, I, I actually talked about this a little bit earlier in the podcast is what really more impressed me about you is first of all, I, I just think, you know, you have devastating punching power, something that I haven't really seen in bare knuckle before. But the fact that when you fought Dave Rickles, he came right out, um, you know, was throwing some bombs, hit you with a couple, backed you up a little bit, and then you said, wow, this is it, and you just came, kept forward. Your ability to take punches, come back from it, and then destroy your opponent, that's what really impressed me about you. No, yeah, yeah, I, I appreciate that. Um, and, you know, Dave was probably the first one to kind of land uh, relatively clean on me. Um but that falls back into creating that comfortability that 
that you aren't made of glass that she that there was just a it was just a normal little crack it feels a little bit different and then you get in there and, and you exchange and you get in the action i think a lot of things that uh, these newer upcoming fighters are whether they're mma or boxing is i think they're still getting overly worked up about either landing a clean shot and wobbling their opponent then you see them getting overly uh they get overly crazy or wild but then vice versa they get hit by a shot and they think oh my god it's almost going to be over he's going to get me no it ain't going to be over the fun just fucking started (laughs) (laughs) now it's time to get in the mix get in the pocket uh you open your eyes your vision gets a little bit better that's when you sharpen your skills and that's where i become really really dangerous oh absolutely so this next fight you're fighting isaac too little for the interim championship and i'm going to go into why it's the interim championship in a little bit but you are we watched a, an interview actually earlier today are you playing that or not i don't think we're going to play an, an interview yeah. earlier when lorenzo hunt actually interviewed you and you said going up to 85 is when you start getting into a little bit of mikey mish. waters yeah. no no he, yeah, so, yeah that was mikey mish so you're yeah. oh, that, that's you gotta, right you gotta give him credit but susan anyway, cigar susan was the, the other, other one. one i'm sorry yeah, it's all right anyway um were you oh he was interviewing quentin henry sorry about that but were you um where you a lot of prep, um, you know, talked about going up into a little bit more muddy waters at 185 pounds, and here you are now fighting at 185 pounds. Take my hat off to you, first of all. You'll fight anyone, any place, anytime, any weight. So True. thank you for that. Thank you. But you know, you said about that. So talk a little bit about co- going up in weight to 185, or maybe right now, you know, maybe you're not going up in weight. By the way, you look right now a little bit, but you look thick as hell, man. So maybe you're not going up in weight, but going up in weight from your no. from your normal fighting weight, and then you know you are fighting yeah. a guy at 185 pounds. Yep. You know, people think that you know you are one of the best fighters in bare knuckle right now, but you are mm-hmm. going to get hit by a guy that weighs 185 pounds or maybe closer to 200 pounds when you walk into that ring. Very true. Yeah. I'm sorry. Someone's trying to. It's all the people that are watching. Someone's, they want to call and say hi to yeah, you. They're watching. To, yeah, someone's trying to call me. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I talked about it in an interview. Um, I want to do memorable stuff. You know, uh, I, I want to do legendary type of stuff in this uh, in this field, uh, bare knuckle. And I, I'm 37 years old. And, you know, I got a couple more good prime years left of, of doing some great things. So I want to fight in multiple different weight classes. Um, but to get to back to what you're saying is, yeah, I understand the risk. You know, I understand the risk. Once you go higher up in weight, you're fighting bigger dudes. You're fighting bigger guys, especially if they know how to punch and sit on their punches. Um, and you come across a guy that not only has natural heavy hands, but he knows how to actually use it as well. That becomes a, a dangerous thing. And But I want to do dangerous shit. I think that's how you're going to be remembered. Um, if I go out there and fucking, you know, I just want to go out there and do glorious ass shit. <laughs> and I want to leave the sport to a five, 10, whatever years down the road. They're like, yo, Mike Richmond was one of the legends. So, you know, and in order to be one of the legends, I got to do uh, uh, dangerous things. And, and uh, like I said, when it comes to fist fighting, I'm not worried about someone smothering me on the ground, their jujitsu prowess, uh, their grappling or wrestling prowess. You know, I'm, it's two men getting in a fist fight, you know, and I'm pretty damn good fist fighting. And I will always, you know, roll the dice at higher weight classes if it's of if it's of some value that's going to make me um, remembered in this sport. So uh, that's what I'm trying to do right now. Yeah, I mean, legacy is so important, and I feel like guys like you that understand that, that it only can propel them even further, and, you know, people be talking about you for years. Now, the one thing I've noticed so far about your career in Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship is you're too good. Like, you knock people out too quick, so you haven't gone to, like, the fifth round, the fourth round. He hasn't so, gone to the third round. He hasn't gone to the third yet. That's right, Chris, and thank you. So where what's your plan for that? I mean, it, it might happen at some point. Do you think it could happen in do little fight? What happens if he drags you into later rounds? I mean, you're obviously in sh- going to be in shape, but where's your head with that? How do you feel about that? You know what? I don't – that's a great question because I know that's going to be the question asked about me fight in and fight out if I continue knocking people out in the first two or three rounds is uh, let's get him in the thir- late third, fourth, or fifth. How is he going to react? How is he going to react? And this could be the fight. You know, at, at the end of the day, there's going to be – you're going to come across someone that can take my shots and take my power and they'll be able to keep coming. Um, I haven't found that guy yet, but it's going to come and I got to be prepared for that. So I I still continuously train uh, to go the distance. Um, But, but I'm always going to go in there with a mindset trying to melt the dude in the ring early. Um, That that just is what I do. If you watch my punches, I'm not, 
Uh, you know, I'm not overly exerting myself with my shots. You don't see me winding up. I'm not doing big old bolo punches. I'm just timing accuracy and, and sitting down on my shots and bare knuckle and just being very accurate, economic with my strikes. Uh, I know what the fuck I'm doing. I, sure do. There's a lot of people in this sport that don't know shit about fighting. Uh, and, and I get it. It's a new sport. And we're going to get to a point where David years down the road, where he's building it, where every fucking fighter on the card is going to be skilled. Every fighter on the card is going to be uh, every, he'll be just a high level of talent from the opening card um, to the last car, to the last bout of the night. And um, I hope I can be a part of that growth to showing these fighters, these uh, fans in the media. You know, I think there's a lot of fans that are on, you know, uh, not aware of fighting. There's a lot of people in the media that don't, um, no shit about fighting or bare knuckle, but everyone's learning every show, every fight. And I want to be one of those fighters to showcase that there's a different fucking level to this. And I'm going to keep showcasing it every fight. I, I, um, I, agree, I agree with you 100% on that, Mike. The one thing that I'm going to say, though, that you can't teach, that's not going to evolve. You either have the balls or you don't have the balls. And you got the balls, you got the mindset. And, th you know, that's what I really appreciate. I agree. You are built for this motherfucking shit. You are built for this sport. Yeah. Too. And to help people lead the way, because listen, it's not just that you're beating people at 165 pounds or 155 pounds, which is your natural weight. You're going up in weight and you're taking risks and taking risks. That is how you become great, right? <laughs> Greatness comes with Absolutely. risks and you're taking the risk. And, you know, I take my hat off to you and appreciate everything you're doing for this sport and, you know, for the company, you know, you're fighting your ass off and we want to see you do great things too. You know, you have a tough fight coming up on, uh, October 15th in Denver, Colorado, and then, you know, maybe uh, another big fight coming up right after that. I forget well, which fight it was, but he said in the ring after his this is my shit. And kind of like <laughs> it is, man. Uh, it is. And we're excited to see what you're going to do. God, I didn't mean to cut you off, Mike, please. No, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm super excited for the growth of the sport, but I'm, I'm super excited to uh, not only uh, – get on this fucking rocket ship and go to the moon myself <laughs> you know i want to uh i want to you know and, and take everyone on the ride with me before before i'm uh it's all said and done i'm out of here i will leave this sport a, 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 ch a world champ maybe a multiple world champ and a legend and uh isaac do a little back to him i don't want to discredit him he's a tough guy and i think he's going to be one of those guys that tries to bring me into the deep water. He's going to try to get close to me. He's going to try to underhook me, overhook me, clinch me. He's going to try to wear out my arms, uh, beat me up. It's just a matter of you know, will his game, um, I'll do my game. Can he, can he withstand my accurate shots, whether I'm in the pocket, the inside or the outside range? Can he, can he handle my footwork and my fight IQ or will he make it dirty for me and I'll never be able to reset? Um, those are the beautiful things about this sport that the ones that know what they're watching and they'll know what they're looking at will really try to dissect. Okay. Absolutely. I just want to say uh, one sorry, more thing. This, this fight to me, comes all down to balls really it's not about a skill i don't think this is going to be a very skillful fight i think it's going to be can you take the punches of isaac doolittle and keep coming forward and we know probably the answer to that and then can isaac doolittle take your punches and keep coming forward and we're going to find out you know the answers to that as well uh, that's why I'm, I'm actually intrigued by this fight because you're coming up and wait and i think it's you know it's, it's a test for you but like i said I, you're built for this shit so you know we're going to see what happens on October 15th. It's going to be, but I, it's going to be fireworks. Yep. It's definitely oh, yeah. going to be fireworks. It's going to be an awesome ass fight. I can fucking guarantee you that. Um, I think every fight that I fight at 185 or 175 for that matter, but definitely 185, I'm going to go in there, guns blazing. They're going to try to knock me out because I'm always going to be like this fucking little guy. And I'm going to be like, yeah, this little guy can knock heads off. And it's always going to be, it's always going to be exciting when you watch me. And I look forward to it. Oh, we Absolutely. look forward to it too as fans. And, you know, I know Dave was thanking you for what you do for the organization. I'll jump on that too. We all fighters. I say, when you guys fight the way you fight and you fight hard and you give these great, intriguing fights, that helps us all because we're all trying to feed our families here. You know what I mean? So thank you for that. The fans mm -hmm. love it. They continue to come. They like what you do. Now, you're a very honest guy. Speaking of fans, I think they like that about you. You say what you think. You don't mince words. I dig that about you. And we were talking about Mike and Mish earlier. When you were on the Mike and Mish show, this is back in Hollywood, Florida, uh, you had some comments. You were talking about your fight IQ earlier a little bit and you brought up elvin brito and you said that you he didn't really impress you he seems to impress a lot of people so i, I like the fact that you're actually you know you found someone that impressed you a little more in isaac doolittle and you're, you're kind of talking them up uh you seem to have some issues with elvin brito people saying that they think he's a good boxer uh you seem to have issues with lorenzo hunt we're going to talk about that in a couple minutes but uh elvin mm -hmm. brito have you seen him have you talked to him since you made that comment do you still feel that way has anything changed in your mind seeing him fight Absolutely. I don't think he's that good. I mean, I, his hands down, 
thinking he's fucking Sergio Martinez of bare knuckle boxing. Like, I'll fucking knock that dude out easy. I don't think, and I get it. His style is tricky. You know, he's kind of like, I, I, he's just, uh, I'm not overly impressed. But, you know, if I go in here, what I, if I get in a match, you know, get in, a, get in a, the ring with him, and maybe he'll impress me. But, but I, I, I doubt it. His style, I just don't uh, think is very impressive. Um, I don't like the hands down, no look, the head down. Understood. Just kind of, he's just kind of hoping for a prayer to land something. He's, you know, he has little slick things that throws people off. You know, uh, I love if you're good at it. If you're good at that style, hands down, that ambush, that Sergio Martinez, or like mm -hmm. a Prince Nassim Ahmed. I mean, he's one of my favorite boxes of all time. Like, I don't know. I just I, the dude just doesn't strike me as very talented. I think Palomino is a way more talented boxer than he is. Um, that's all I got to say about that. I'm no, not totally cool. Off. But the reason Still I'm a the reason I'm asking you that, uh, Mike, is because. You know, you also have Lorenzo Hunt somewhere on the horizon. You're saying how good Isaac Doolittle is, but now you look at Brito, who trains with Lorenzo Hunt. Lorenzo Hunt's been running his mouth. That's what he does the best. And I don't want to take too much shine off this fight, but let's talk about that really quick. Lorenzo Hunt, you and Lorenzo Hunt chirping back and forth. Uh, I, I don't even know what started all this. Was it him? I don't think it was you. I mean, there's there's some words going back and yeah. forth here. I think I posted somewhere that I'll fight anyone and I'll go up and fight him. And I think, you know, he got word of that. So I think it kind of started with a little, a little chatter back and forth, um, before that uh, Florida show. Mm -hmm. And, um, so what happened there when I got down there, <laughs> I said, we saw what happened there. <laughs> when I, when I got down there, I, I didn't get down there till weigh-ins day. So I, obviously the media day, the day before I saw him, you know, try to pull some shit with Trujillo. And then when I was down there at weigh-ins, there was rumors that, yo, he, he's here too. He might try to punk you on camera. I'm like, oh, whatever. Like, you're not going to do that to me, I promise you. Especially on your birthday. Um, Wasn't your birthday or something? <laughs> yeah, it was actually See? my birthday too. Yeah, my <laughs> you're not letting that happen. Yeah, you're going to punk me on my birthday. Like, well, I'm out of period. <laughs> um, but yeah, then he rolled up and, you know, doing the Lorenzo things. And then it always starts off as playful banter back and forth. But then you always rise to a level where I'm sure it made some people feel uneasy. And then uh, I think the aftermath of that really got under his skin. Um, you know, my fan, all my fans clowned him over and over again. You know, he got embarrassed by trying to punk me and he got punked back. I think it was a, 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 a bunch of things. And then I wanted to fight. I'm like, all right, cool. Like, you're not going to try to make a fool or a mocker out of me. I'll fight you. I don't care who you think you are. Let's fucking dance. Mm -hmm. And then there was this big, big buildup. And it was disappointing that it didn't happen, that it didn't come to fruition. But um, I, I still want to fight that dude. I, whatever the outcome is with Quentin, I still like. Nah, I still want to be coming for him. I, I, he, I live rent free in his head. <laughs> it is driving him nuts. See, and uh, Mike, Mike, at the end of the day, he's gonna have to take that fight. He would argue, I think, that you, that he lives rent free in your head. So this is intriguing because that's Lorenzo's thing, where he tries to beat people down mentally. But you don't seem like a guy that he can beat down mentally. But Joe Riggs didn't to me either. But he beat Joe Riggs mentally. So he finds he's like that little fly was around your head. That's Lorenzo. You got to swat it away. You gotta sure. and, and a lot of people can't. And I don't, seriously, because you can't do it. He just stays on you. I'm a calm. Well, I'm not calm, but I'm a guy that wouldn't get rocked by that. But after a while, it's just like, oh, my gosh. OK, so this being said, you're talking about his fight coming up. We're very excited about that with Quentin the Hero Henry. And you have your fight coming up after that. And we have Dave here in studio. So while Mike's here, if we have a moment, let's talk about this title situation. Some people are confused by it. What's going on? Can you kind of shed some light on what's happening with this title situation with uh, Lorenzo, with Mike, everything, the titles? Yeah, we're just trying not to um, hold up all the weight divisions as I'm having a talk with Luis Palomino um, actually, later on today about it too. Um, he's going to have to give up one of those one of those uh, titles. I Does can't... he know that yet? Or did you just announce that on the podcast? No, I mean I okay, talked to him about okay, it before. Okay, I, I just don't want to. I I don't want to hold up. We're just too new right now, and we need. We're doing all these events, so we need top fights for all these different cars. So I can't have guys holding up two weight divisions, and therefore it's the interim championship. If if Lorenzo wins the fight against Quentin Henry, he'll pick whether he's going down to 185 or he's going to hold on to the 205 pound championship, but he has to give one of those championships up. Okay. And then that's why I made it the interim because rightfully he is the 185 pound champion and I can't just take it from him. But after that fight, he'll make an announcement either way it goes. And then if he chooses to be at 185, then maybe uh, Mike's still going to be the, you know, the interim champ and they're going to fight for the, for the, 
natural 185 pound championship if he chooses to stay at 205 then he's going to vacate the 185 and that fight will be for the real 185 pound championship but that's kind of how that is right now well thanks for explaining that that'll be interesting development so basically it's for the growth of the company and for the fans because you don't want to you don't want to clog up two title belts look it's bare knuckle it's not it's not boxing it's bare knuckle um these guys could suffer a broken hand they could suffer an injury and we could have two weight divisions clogged up for a whole entire year before someone makes a defense we just can't do that and that's why we're doing it this way look does mike beat everybody does he rightfully deserve a, a title shot absolutely that's why we're doing this and if that fight happens with him and lorenzo i think it's going to get everybody in bare knuckle talking yeah so we'll you know we'll see what happens and if and if quentin henry beats lorenzo and he wants to come down to 185 and hold on to that championship and then fight mike richmond then you know that can happen as well but there's just a lot of options there but i can't let these fighters they can fight for another championship in another weight division but they can't keep holding on to it and just just well, it's harder to make matches waiting. that way yeah absolutely. you gotta you gotta, you yep. gotta get the titles defended and i yep. agree with that mike richmond we're so excited you took the time to come on i think you froze up again that or you just have a dude this guy when you freeze up you make the best faces where i feel like i'm gonna get my ass kicked if you can still hear me uh but i think we lost him mike richmond so excited you took the time if you can hear me to come on today so uh, i'm looking forward to that fight isaac doolittle he's a game opponent both guys undefeated absolutely. for a title dude i mean you can't beat this i mean yeah you have, What's going on there? You have uh, you have Isaac Doolittle, who also has very deceiving, devastating punching oh, yeah. power. As he, you know, he dropped uh, Jared Warren. He's dropped a lot of guys that he's fought already. So that's going to be a very, very intriguing fight because Mike Richmond is going up to 185 pounds, and now he has to take the punching power of Isaac Doolittle. So we're going to see can he take that punching power, and then can he? Can he re-deliver? We're going to find out a lot on that night. I was excited when that fight got announced uh, for some of those reasons you said, but just I just think it's going to be amazing. And there's so many uh, directions that it can go out of this fight after that happens. So we're looking forward to it. That's BKFC 31 in Denver. BKFC.com. Grab the BKFC app. It's going to be awesome. Before we get though, there, though, uh, Monroe, Monroe, Louisiana, you got Lorenzo Hunt, 7-1. and one. You got Quentin Henry, 5-1. and one. And these guys are going for the vacant cruiserweight title. So uh, that's going to be, they don't like each other in case you didn't know. Devis, yeah, they, devastating, devastating punching power with, uh, with, with both of these guys is going to be a very intriguing main event. It's in Quentin Henry's hometown where yeah. everybody's really excited about it. Lorenzo is going to do this. Uh, he's going to do it. He's going to get him fired <laughs> up. He's going to get Quentin Henry fired up and it's going to be, a, it, it's going to be bombs, bombs away. Now we got to get you out here, but before we do last question, uh, big Ben Rothwell debut, very excited about that. Taking on Bobo Bannon, Bobo Bannon three and three, I believe. I think he's had full three knockouts too. So this is a fight that from what I heard, Bobo Bannon wanted. He Absolutely. asked for this. No, he wanted it. He wanted it. Look, it's an opportunity for him. He's stepping up with a with a guy with a way bigger name, and if he's able to score a victory over a guy like Ben Rothwell, then you know that puts him right in line for something big as well, something else big. If Ben Rothwell walks right through Bobo Ben, and then he's you know he proves that he belongs here in, yeah, in Bare Knuckle, it, it is a big question mark match. I mean, it's it, it's a guy who uh, Bobo agreed to him prior to BKFC agreeing to the weight. Bobo. Camp agreed with Ben Rothwell to go up and wait for oh, that. He really wanted yeah, it, I yeah. didn't even know that because I, you know, we have a 275 pound weight limit, and I said it can't go above that. Mm-hmm. But they mutually agreed on it. Then they came to me, and initially I said no, and then I said I'll let it happen for this one fight. So we're not opening up that new weight division. We okay. just did this one exception for this fight because they both wanted it, and I think the fans want to see it as well. So oh, we're yeah. gonna let that happen. And, and I love the fact that you don't just give these guys layup fights when they come in. Like Bilbo Bannon yeah. is far from a layup fight for Big that's Ben. That's what that's what Sean always says to me. He goes. Nobody gets a free ticket. Sean here Wheelock? At B- yeah, yeah, here at BKFC. Nobody does. Nobody gets a free ride here. I mean, Paige Van Zandt got, got handed Britain, Britain Hart and, yeah, and got on. a loss. You know, these these big-name guys that are coming in are going to have tough opponents. Greg Hardy, who's going to make his debut later on the year, is going to have a really tough opponent there, too. Ooh, Jimmy intriguing. Rivera came in, and he had a tough yeah, opponent with Howard Davis. I mean, we don't give these guys layups. Why? Because the fans deserve to have great fights. Oh, the fans, really they would, and, they, and they would talk right there. They'd know it was a layup. Look, Dave, I know you have other stuff you have to get to. I know you have to get out of here. So you can you can go. But before you do, before you do, one of the things I wanted to talk about was Great Falls. We talked about what a great fight it was the other night. We mentioned some Nate Diaz news. He had a great fight, too. I'm going to ask you flat out. Everyone's talking about this. Is Nate Diaz coming to Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship? Is he or not? I can't tell you whether Come he's on. coming or not, but I can tell you that we, we want him here at Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, and we're going to do everything that we can do to get him here at Bare Knuckle Fighting Ooh, Championship. So, so you just said that no one gets an easy layup, this or that. So if he, let's say he says yes, who does he fight? 
Look at this yeah. guy. Look at you, investigative journalist. I, I think that the fans would absolutely love to see both the same type of personalities, both just guys that keep fighting. Nate Diaz versus Mike Perry would it. be a fan's dream fight. I think That'd the be a fans would fight. love to see that fight. I would love to see <laughs> I'm that. I would pay to see that I'm fight <laughs> easily. That would be an amazing fight. So, you know, if we could do something like that, that would be great. But, you know, Nate Diaz is absolutely on the radar. Wow. He's not just on the radar. We're aggressively going to make a move for him right now. You know, we'll see what else he's – He's. I, I know he has something else that he's, that he's working on right now. But Forget I about it. think I'm having a – I'm having a feeling after have, after having a talk with the with the partners and the and the guys at Triller that we're going to be able to make a really viable attempt. For so Nate, this is for something that's already been talked about within the office. Like you're really you're. you're I know we're going for this. We're going for this. Oh, absolutely fantastic. I, I, mentioned I, I, that fight. You know, look, we have to respect the UFC's window that they have to re-sign him and everything, but um, we're going for him. 100. percent We're going for Nate. Wow, Davis. big announcement. That should be the breaking news there. I like the drum roll, but that's the breaking news. I I can't believe you're. There it is. Without Rob here, you're so giving. Thank you for telling us. Do you, do you hold back when Rob comes on? Thank I you. I want to give Rob some gum. <laughs> Thank you for coming in. All right, guys, in. man. Thanks for yeah. having me, guys. Thanks, Thank Dave. You. Major announcement, DC. Wow. Nate Diaz being accosted. Is that the word? I'm trying to use big words. By Bare Knuckle Cord- Fighting Cord- Championship. Accorded. Cord- Accorded. What's accosted? Is that even a word? I don't know that's a good word. That goes for that. <laughs> then I might not be right. Thank you. I, I thought it was a little off. But oh, so let's let's reset that in case they use that clip. They'll probably use Dave's clip anyway. The people Perfect. are saying this. But Nate Diaz, the big news today, being uh, sought after. How's that? Perfect. By Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship aggressively. And uh, you heard of David Feldman, president, founder, saying people would love Mike Perry versus Nate Diaz. And I, I don't know if people heard you, but you asked for off so you could watch that fight. I'm going to ask for off that night too if that There's happens. There's no shot I'm getting. Denied. <laughs> yeah. Denied. Yeah. Okay, damn it. Well, we'll be watching from the stands. I mean, it, that'd be an incredible fight. So uh, some big news here today. Very excited about that. Uh, other stuff that we said we'd get to, Mike Perry news. Speaking of Mike Perry, I just wanted to take a second. Uh, I'm a father. We've talked about this on the show. Um, and Mike is as well to Ocean. And we had, um, I had my daughter around the same time he had Ocean. So it's cool to watch them as they both grow up when I do the interviews to, uh, with Mike. But I just saw the other day, and I'm going to be sending my message about it. It looks like he's uh, having another child. He's yep. having a daughter. I texted so, him last night. Congrats. Yeah. So, and as always, quick response back. You yeah, know, Mike's a good guy. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy he's building his family. I think that's going to actually knowing the guy Mike is now from being around him and interviewing him, I feel like every time he has a kid, he's going to want to fight harder because it's all about family from now and making a legacy for his family, making money for his family. The only thing I thought about now, I have, I have uh, same thing, boy first, and then I have a daughter. And when I saw that balloon get popped in the gender reveal and it was a daughter, all I could think about was, well, God bless any guy that wants to take her out on <laughs> a date. And I'm serious. I kept thinking, yeah. I'm like, they're done. But it, it was, it's a cool moment for Mike and his family. So. Hi, everybody. Oh, awesome. Oh, have it. Say hi. Let's find out what we're going to have in addition to our beautiful, growing, healthy family. Okay. Ready? You want to do it? You just do it. Okay. Y'all want to hold it for me? Just so I know it's safe in place. All right. Ready? Ocean, are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three. That's Look, awesome. did you hear the? Ex- yeah. This is why I love it. Mike is such a killer in the ring. Oh yeah, he's an absolute, and I mean this with the most respect. Because I love it, like a lunatic in a good way. He always has the things to say. Sometimes they don't even make sense, but they intrigue you and they're amazing. But it's so fun to watch him with his family. He's like, "Do you want to do it? You do yeah. it." And being a dad, and then we see the pop, and he, because oh! that's real emotion. I have kids. I know how he's feeling. Now, I never did a gender reveal. Did, would you do one if you had a kid? Uh, probably not. Yeah, that's not my. But thing. then again, if maybe the wife, my wanted. significant other, wants that, you got to do it. You yeah, know? maybe the wife wanted. And he it did too. when he texted me back. You know, he said thank you, and he said complete package. So he's he's excited. It's, it's what they call. I learned when I had my daughter second. It's called the rich man's family. I never knew that, but you know, you got the complete package. Good for him, and it's good that it's at this time in his career. Did you see the uh, dog come into play? What he like talking? at the end of the end of the video there, the, the it, German Shepherd came. I, in. You know, I met his dog before when I did an interview with him. That's funny, and it's funny you bring up dogs because. That goes right into my next topic. Dave, you're good at this. <laughs> you're really good at this. So Tony Loco Soto, we talked about it earlier. We know what he said about what he would do to the guy's dog when he was fighting yeah. him. And, you know, we, we weren't going to carry that on the app. That's not our He was kind of nervous. He, like, grabbed me. He's like, Dave, you know, I only said that because it was National Dog Day. I'm like, <laughs> okay, man. <laughs> no, I kept busting him every time. So actually, after he won, when I saw him, I'm like, Tony, what time does the show start? And he's like, shut up. And I said, 
you know, it was only him building the fight. He's actually a dog lover, and he loves dogs so much. He's such a big dog in Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. If you didn't see it, part of Bare Knuckle News right now, uh, he changed his diet up a little bit. I think we have that clip we can go to this right now. This is a public service announcement. To all you motherfuckers, put my name in your mouth. I'm going to tell you right now. You'll soon to see there is one top dog, and that's me. You already know what time it is, baby. It's almost time to eat. I don't play that shit. I'm a fucking dog. <laughs> He's a dog. So I don't want to take away from the validity, but we Go. didn't see him open the can. Dude, I believe it was real dark right. food. And, yeah, and, you know, regardless, right. even if it my wasn't stomach real, turned that, uh, I'm not hungry. I was hungry. That's and what I, I was By the way, say. Just one of, you ask what I do. I just order lunch for no, the like, so lot, Evan man. was telling me about it, and he said he ate dog food. I said, okay, maybe dry food. No. I wasn't oh, expecting wet, wet food. That's, <laughs> that, that killed me. That did it really make your stomach turn, Dave? Or it was I thought you were joking. I'm not serious? hungry anymore. So. No, the other Dave. Oh, okay. he said it in the group text. 100%. Oh, Dave, I thought you were joking. You're being real. See that stuff. Hundred percent. That's always gr- my dogs don't eat wet. Well, they kind of. They, they're my dogs are gourmet. They they oh, eat of like course they are. ground chicken. Does the chef the come and best. prepare it? Yeah, yeah, right. So, I got to tell you, this is going to be something really weird for you guys to hear, probably for the whole audience to hear. I'm bearing my soul here. But how's that different than anything else you say, Brian? Because <laughs> this is really oh, weird. Oh Jesus! Thank you for that. Um, I always, since I was a little kid, when I would see like the Purina commercials on for the cat food or the dog food, and they'd open it up, it always looked tasty to me. <laughs> I don't know why it did. Matter of fact, I used to eat dry dog food out of the garage in my friend's house. We thought it was cool because you could eat it as a human, and we would gross the girls out by doing it when we were little kids. And I don't gross girls out anymore, but they still don't talk to me. I can't figure it out, Dave. I was wondering if you knew why. Uh, no, I don't know why. <laughs> I will say the uh, closest I came to dog food, Scooby Snacks. I love their fruit snacks, and they came out with, I guess, like, um, like little biscuits, and I thought they Ooh. were actual Scooby. And I had you one. I only had one. What it taste like? Um, not like a, a yeah. Biscuit. Like dog biscuits are like very dry. I'd, I'd be, yeah. you know, maybe next week if you guys want, if not, maybe we bring some dog food in. And I I'll, won't be on, so go ahead. You can I, I know I'll do it. I'll eat yeah, it. It's all you. Yeah, send us some dog food. I'll eat it. I'll try it out. Dog food eating contest? <laughs> Me and Rob, yeah. Rob will chip is his tooth. Is that vegan? Will Rob yeah, I don't know if it's vegan. He'll they probably his, make vegan. He'll chip his tooth on the dog food. <laughs> That's if you can do it I mean, gum. just to go back to the chipping tooth thing, I don't want to dwell on it too much, but I do. who chips their tooth <laughs> chewing gum? Like, Rob. did he get like a jawbreaker gum or a crybaby gum and chewed hard? Cry I don't baby. understand. Wow. Warheads, murders. What's, what's more Rob... Then breaking your tooth, chewing gum. That's my question. Nothing. Ordering DoorDash <laughs> to and the getting office. it sent to the office. All right. And then the other thing I want to talk about, some more bare knuckle news before we get out of here. Uh, first of all, we had a couple birthdays. I don't want to miss anybody's birthdays, but the ones that I know about, I know that uh, Lorenzo the Juggernaut Hunt fighting Quentin the Hero Henry coming up uh, in Louisiana. Uh, it was his birthday. And if you look in the background as I'm talking about Lorenzo, this is pretty amazing. There's no audio, but Lorenzo had sent this to me just bragging. I don't think he even put this out online like a month ago. He's so in shape and getting ready, cardio ready. What he's saying here is he goes under the water for two minutes. I think it's a little over two minutes, which is a round and bare knuckle two minutes. He goes under a little more than two minutes. He's got the weights to hold him down. And you'll see as we're talking about, we're leave it play in the background. He stays under the water the whole time, the whole two minutes. You could time it. And then when he starts to come up, he starts, he's like, it's like a movie. Like he's coming out. He starts like shadow boxing coming out and the, the water's coming off him and he's ready to go. I will say he didn't, he doesn't come up like he needs air. No. He just comes up just like, a, like you said, a like, movie. Just like a movie, up. like a character in a, a superhero or something. But we know the hero is Quentin Henry. So we don't want him to take exception to that. Look, you can see he's still underwater. there, just floating, <laughs> just floating. I, this is why Lorenzo entertains me because I would never think, let me go hold my breath for two minutes holding weights and make a video. He does. Well, the other thing we talked about, too, was Lorenzo actually interviewed Henry at Fight Night Jackson 1. That was interesting. And, like, I think Henry said, I'll put some pixie dust on and you and I will fight. Yeah, he did and say. Lorenzo was like, let's go. I'm on. And we were then, watching that. So. Must love MMA, right? That came from Susan Singari. Uh, you can go look it up yourself. They had an interview, and it was pretty tame then, but that's what Lorenzo does. He stays pretty tame. He's very professional. You know, he does the interviews and stuff here and there, but then when it's time to go, he's ready to go, and he's going to tell you what he I bet you he's thinks. a pretty good fisher, fisherman. He's still underwater. Uh, yeah. Still underwater. He throws the bait out there, and the next thing you know, it's like you're in my you're And in my no house. one thinks they're going to take it, and they always do. That's why I want to see if, if it ends up being, if uh, Richmond gets passed. And the guy Doolittle. goes to everyone's hometowns and fights people. That's a, Well, Mike Richmond, who's also the same fighting, thing, yeah. he knocks people out in their hometowns. Uh, I mean, I There's can a say stat. the same about this guy, too. He said, remember he said it his last, here he comes, here he comes. In his last thing, he said, I will travel from town to town to teach you people. And now, what, he's traveling to Quentin Henry's hometown. Cruiserweight title on line. Here he comes, two minutes. Look at him. All relaxed coming up. Now, if you're Quentin Henry and you see this, is this a gimmick to you or does this impress you? I mean, his cardio has got to be good to be able to do this. 
holding his breath. Now he's punching after two minutes of being underwater. It was exactly two minutes. That's that's what, uh, from what I understand, that's what the producers tell me. Right now we're at two minutes and thirteen. Look at 14. that. Look at that. He's up, and now he looks like he's going to clubber Langy or something. Peace. All right, that's Lorenzo Hunt. Now that's just showing you some of the strange prep he does. We've seen him lift cars. He's always feats of strength. The hero, though, is very tough, and the hero reminds me of a car, so I don't know what's going to happen there. The last thing we have to get to before we uh, close up the show today is, this is really cool. We we're talking about Lorenzo's birthday. Happy birthday, uh, champ. And then the other champ had a birthday, too. Christine Faria. I actually got a text message inviting me to Las Vegas to go to her party, the champ's party. That's awesome. But it was on the same night, I think, as our fight. Yeah. So I couldn't go. Apparently, it was this last-minute party. It's not that far from Montana. I didn't think about that. I could have just said the show, bye, and gone. You to- probably could have kept your headset in. <laughs> it's so close. But yeah, I wouldn't hear it anyway. I never do on my headset. Uh, I always get yelled at. But Christine Faria, the misfit, her birthday as well. Uh, happy birthday, Christine. Uh, we love that you're a champ. We love that you're fighting for us. And, and what I noticed about her birthday was really cool. She had celebrities show up. She had other fighters show up. And if you haven't seen this yet, we're going to throw it up on the screen. This is who showed up to her party. Look at that. You know that is. Wow. That's Money Man, dude. That's Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather there. Was With- it TBE? Best uh, ever? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but look, there it is. So obviously they were talking about bare knuckle fighting championship a little bit. He's there with the champ. Uh, I can't wait to talk to Christine again to wish her a happy birthday and also ask her what this conversation was like, uh, where Floyd's at with bare knuckle, what he thinks about it. So that's pretty cool when you see our stars, our champions leveling up you see them hanging out with the who's who of combat sports. It's her birthday. Who shows up at Floyd Mayweather? I mean, that's huge. That's pretty awesome. I don't know if she even do it, but I I know they must have some sort of friendship or something. We'll find out more about it, but I just think that's such a cool picture. And for me, this shows you the trajectory of bare knuckle fighting championship because what, three, four years ago, four years ago, Floyd wouldn't have known who we were. Floyd would, I mean, he might've, but like he wouldn't have cared. He wouldn't show up to someone's birthday party. He sees the champ. He goes right over to the champ and asks for a picture. He asks for a picture with Christine. How cool is that? It's, it's pretty awesome. And like just seeing the growth of this company and like, you know, I said it earlier, I'm not from the combat sports world at all. And learning and seeing is just, you know, it's fun. surpassing a million, million fans on Instagram. And then the fact that recognition of people in our DMs, like from John Jones to Floyd Mayweather. And it's just, well, you get outside of fighting, oh, you, it's awesome. but you get outside of fighting. You got Gordon Ramsay's a big oh, fan. Yeah. You got uh, Joey Fatone, apparently from NSYNC was a big fan. Yep. You got, uh, I heard the kid from Cobra Kai that plays Robbie was a yeah, big he fan. Came. Uh, you know, you got all these Shaq. We've talked about that till we're blue in the face. That's your boy. Yeah. He's my, he, it's funny. Shaq he's, 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 a, he's an interesting guy. He doesn't like to talk on the phone. He just FaceTimes you. Oh, it's really? Out of nowhere. Really? Yeah. That's yeah, crazy. I know someone else like that too. How come we weren't invited to that party? Uh, Christine's oh, party. I don't know. Maybe. Brian was. I don't Real? know. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I got the text, man. I was very. I, was, I said the champs inviting me. They probably wanted me to come there. Christine and cover knew it. I was working, so that's why. Well, she knew I was working too. I don't know. If, I forget who. Oh, got, she, it, well, did, she didn't know. Senior didn't tell you what happened. What, what are you talking about? About you? You working? Oh, what do you mean, here? You? Yeah. He's talking well, about you. well, he probably wanted me to come do the show first, so he get this out of the way before he fires me. That's what it was. If he's gonna fire me, do it live on the that air. That was the breaking news. <laughs> you got that? Uh, Please. Cue that sound up. <laughs> that would be actually. Be, I'm not gonna lie. If you guys fired me live on the app right now, that would be good content. I couldn't fault you for that. Um, but you know, the product would just suffer. You know how it goes. You don't believe I'll that. I'll keep you around. <laughs> you, don't, you don't believe that, do we? Listen, we had a great. You carried show today. me today, so I appreciate yeah, you having dude, me. You're hanging out. This is great. You didn't even talk that much. I feel bad with David. No, here. actually, we didn't hit the uh, UK card, did we? No, we did not hit yeah, that yet. So I was actually going to review the cards, huh? and I was going to go back to it. So hold on, before we get to UK, I just want to recap. We've got a lot of stuff coming at you with Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. You got BKFC 30 Monroe, Louisiana main event. We've talked about it. The Juggernaut Lorenzo Hunt taking on the hero Quentin Henry seven and one versus five and one for the vacant cruiserweight title of the world. In Quentin's hometown, they're gonna. I'm gonna be honest. They're gonna hate Lorenzo. Who do you there. got in that fight? I, I'm a professional. I don't. I, I'm not Rob. I don't. I don't go and talk trash on Lorenzo Hunt off the air. You and see what happens, Chip Tooth. Yeah, right. So. He got, the, the Lorenzo was like made that happen. Lorenzo probably gave him the gum, sent him the gum. But I can't pick. I'm not gonna sit there and, and talk trash. I, I, I believe in both fighters. I think it's gonna be great. I think that Quentin is extremely tough. I think he's got punching power. I, I think he's. I, I think that. Quentin's going to be dialed in more than ever. Uh, but I just wonder, everybody who tells me they can't withstand Lorenzo's, or they can withstand Lorenzo's head games, never can. They can't. It just doesn't work. So we'll see if Quentin can do it. But even if he can withstand the head games, and Quentin would tell you this too, Lorenzo's got talent. I mean, even if even the head games don't work, Lorenzo's got so much. I've seen Lorenzo catch punches with his bare hand. Yeah. It's crazy, the talent he has. So it's going to be a hard fight for both guys. Uh, but... I really don't know why I have. I'm more looking forward to the atmosphere. And if you're watching it on the app, you're going to feel much like you did Great Falls. You're going to feel that atmosphere from Louisiana coming through because those people are going to hate 
Quentin Henry, excuse me, Kate Lorenzo Hunt. They're going to love Quentin Henry because you know Lorenzo is going to come and run in his and mouth. And he just feeds off that. It's like his favorite thing. Yeah, right? He likes being booed. It's interesting. So that'll be a good fight. You get the debut of Big Ben Rothwell uh, versus Bobo Abaddon, three and three, three KOs, not a layup. We talked about that. Now, what I want to do quickly is I want to talk about Big Ben. Big Ben's been having this problem. I talked to him uh, at the, I forget what the number was, but it was in Hollywood. Last time we were in Hollywood, Florida. 24. Thank you. BKFC 24. That was good. On top of that. I think it was 26. 26 26 on the 24. That was horrible. What are you doing, Chris? 26 on the 24. (laughs) I don't know. I don't even know. But I was talking to Big Ben. First of all, I want to compliment him. Wonderful guy to talk to. Uh, I can't wait to work with him a little more. He's got hands bigger than catcher's mitts. I wouldn't want to get hit by one of them. I shook his hand. My whole body like went in his hand when I shook it. So he's a Godzilla. He took a picture with someone at that event that was also in the heavyweight division and he was like two times the size of him i think he had a i think he had a picture i have a picture somewhere where he put his fist up next to my head and like it's pretty big dude it's scary but the other thing that he was telling me and this was back then he couldn't find shoes he fought barefoot he couldn't find shoes he's uh, i think a 16 wide and he couldn't find shoes and i'm like oh you'll find him we'll find a sponsorship deal well i found out the other day he's still looking for shoes he got some shoes they didn't fit him right so i'm gonna look directly at the camera and i think we should put this on uh instagram or socials at some point either he's talking about it or we are but if you know anybody in the footwear industry that can get big ben rothwell shoes 16 wide he still doesn't have shoes. I don't know what the poor guy's going to do. I feel like his management company should be on that. They probably have good Well, I'm his clothes. manager now. Okay, good. Oh, I'll okay. take the manager cut. So listen, I don't even know who his management company is, but I'm, now I'm going to take the manager cut. First now, round. For, oh, no, I'm not. They're not going to. First round's his management. I can't get in there. No okay. So, but what I would say is if you know anybody, in, the, in the, if anybody, a fan, we have all these fans talk about Gordon Ramsay and everybody. He's in the food industry. We need like an Al Bundy in the shoe industry. We need somebody who sells shoes or, or, or has a contact to people with shoes. 16 wide, I believe that's correct. Hit us up, get a hold of us, let us know if there's something you can do to help Big Ben Rothwell out as far as getting him shoes for the event. Because I think uh, we've contacted Asics and the shoes either they couldn't make them or they didn't fit. I don't know, but he's in the comments right now. Maybe actually. It's ben is Ben is oh man. Ben, I'm not really your manager. If I'd kill your career, that was a joke. But I want to get you shoes, man. We talked about it, and we're gonna do our what, best. What is it, to real that. Ben Rothwell or is it Big Ben? No, it's Rothwell fighter. Okay. Well, there's there's two Big Bens, right? Yeah. There's Big Ben the fan. Who's Shawnee right? Mac giving you some credit. Right. Hey, Shawnee out Mac, how are Big you? Ben's been texting me for like two months. Ben, I'll text you back in a little bit. <laughs> Which Big Ben? Big, the, you know, the uh, Big fan. Ben. The Big Ben the fan. fan. Super yeah, fan. okay. Uh, a Big Ben the super fan's mad that Ben Rothwell's heel out here, I feel like, because he's taking his oh, name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, Big Ben, we love you. But Ben Rothwell, we're going to get you those shoes, man. If I have to sew them myself, I'm going to get them for you. And uh, I'm going to do my best. I, I feel like this could be, Ben, like some kind of endorsement or sponsorship for you. You could really turn this into making some money, too. And I feel like we could, like, really lean into this and get you shoes. So we're looking forward to Big Ben's shoes. How to say that. It's going to What happen. size you wear? I'm a 12. I think I am, too. You want to change shoes after no, the show? thank you. Okay, just checking. All right, so we got, <laughs> we got Denver coming up after that. That's October 15th. Uh, both undefeated uh, men fighting for a title. Light heavyweight title. Mike Richmond versus the Honey Badger, Isaac Doolittle. I hear the music playing me out. I thought we were going to hit BKC UK. I'm not playing you out. I'm promoing the upcoming events. Oh, I didn't. I didn't yeah, see you got to pay I'm attention a little screen. bit. I'm doing 15 <laughs> things here. Okay, here's the upcoming events. We talked about Hunt Henry. That's going to be awesome. Richmond Doolittle is going to be amazing. Like, I can't wait for that when that was announced. These are all coming up. BKFC.com. Grab the app. $4.99 a month. What are you doing missing this stuff? Plus all the other great content we have. Uh, a lot of great stuff. And then we talked about BKFC UK. Uh, going back to the UK, there it is, your main event. Look at that. Terrell versus Banks. That's going to be fun, man. And then you can see all the stuff we have. We're going to talk about that more in the um, in the weeks coming up because it's November 26th, which is right around the corner, but we're going to get through these other events first. But to go back to the UK, they were loud. They were excited last time. I can't wait to see. New spot, too, in Newcastle. Th- there you go. So we got new fans. We come see it. I want yeah, it's about five hours north of London. I'm glad you guys know your your um, geography because I'm I'd be so, oh we're going to London. What an, what a dumb American I am. So I just figured it's the same. Would have been ride. a fun drive. For I you. drove nice cab. So ride. hopefully I don't have to drive from London to there. But yeah, yeah, you drove driving like, in London. Dude, was let me tell a story real quick. Now I have to tell a story. I would not drive in London. I would crash my car immediately. We got off the plane. DC here is going to drive in London because he's brave. I'm not, and I'm like, ah, oh, okay, this should be good. Within seconds, we hit a curb as we turn. You did. You kind of hit a curb lightly. I mean, I would have broken. Might have happened. Yeah, yeah. And then just as we're then it starts to rain. Then no, but then it starts to rain, 
And about the second day in London, I'm like, DC, how are you feeling about driving? He's like, oh, I'm getting more confident. I'm getting more confident. And they were all telling me, because I know nothing, again, dumb American, hey, the best place to sit is right behind, uh, right behind, the, like, what would be the passenger side here, which is the driver's side there. Sit right behind the driver. And then I find out from uh, Nick Chapman, who does our BKFC Thailand, he's from England, he goes, nah, mate. That's the most dangerous place you can sit. That's the place where they get hit the most. I'm like, I think Nate Shook told me to sit there. I believe. Thank you, right, Matt. Sounds about Nate right. Yeah. Uh, so you were uh, an interesting driver. You're ready. You're going to drive again? Oh, probably gonna... not. No. Well, no, I have to. It just, just makes it easier. And like at one point, easier for who? Not you. Well, I think just like <laughs> at one point, it was like midnight. Uh, senior was like, "Hey, man, I got to go to this spot. Order me an Uber." And I'm like, "You're not going there by yourself." And yeah. luckily, we had a car, so I drove security, there. And... Personal system oh, security. Yeah. The Uber on the way home back to the hotel from the venue was the best, though. Yeah. Remember that? Was, oh, I was with you. That's you right. Were with me. And yeah, my you wife wouldn't and, shut up. You were just talking. Well, Sosha and my <laughs> wife both have this thing where they like to talk, and I what thought I the Uber driver was going to kick us out at one point. He loved me. I was entertaining him. Well, that's like on the way to the show, and Sosha got put into my car, <laughs> and I always say like that first hour leading into showing up for the event, I'm, I'm like up, in my man. inner zen, and I'm like relaxing, and no. nope, it was full conversation. Relaxing. Trying to be, you know, before the... No. Who was in the car with us? It was me, you. I was in there. Nate. On the way down. Yeah, that wasn't that bad on the way down. The thing is, you got to remember, you do something different than I do. I'm pretty like this a lot. I mean, this isn't just from the mic. I know that I'm a lot sometimes. I'm a lot. But before... A lot. There's going to be a meme. But before the... um, Or a gif. Before the, before the fight, dude, for what I do to get the crowd going and stuff... I'm jacked up as it is, man, and I get more. I get pumped up about it. So I talk a lot, DC. Do you know that? That's okay. That's I, how I make my money. It was a different vibe, and it worked out. So now, <laughs> now, I, I, now I can handle I'm, anything. You know, these jerks. I'm finding all this out now. I, I thought, wow, we enjoyed some quality time to and from the arena. These guys were happy to hang out with me, and now they throw me to the wolves. I get enough of you every Tuesday from 12.05 to 1.30. What time is it now? Well, it's funny because you uh, get to jack up the crowd, and I'm the one that has to make sure security takes care of them. Yeah, yeah. I jack the crowd up, and then you got to take them down. Yeah. That's right. Well, listen, Cranston, great job today. Hey, man, DC, thank you for having me. Thank you for Rob, coming please on. please come back. Fix your tooth. Rob, yeah, I don't know. Smile big next week. Uh, we had Dave Feldman on, so I'll be like Sean Wheelock. For DC, for Dave Feldman Jr., for Dave Feldman Sr., and for me, Brian Socia. Until next week, do the like, comment, subscribe, and you're Rob. Like, comment, Knuckle subscribe. Knuckle up! No, now do it. Like, comment, subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe. No, 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 no. Knuckle up! Ah! No! When I touch him, he will see that I'm the champ for a reason. It's not a mistake. Quinton, the hero, Henry! I want Lorenzo Hunt, whether it's for a title or not. I'm tired of him running his mouth. Down goes Joe Riggs. No controversy there. It's just a matter of time before he catches a little Alpha and Omega. I'm taking this. It's over. It's over.